las sociedades de consumo destrozaron el medio ambiente, liquidaron millones de especies de plantas y animales, envenenaron los mares, los ríos y los lagos, contaminaron el aire, Saturaron la atmósfera de dióxido de carbono y otros gases nocivos. Rascaron la capa de ozono. Agotaron yacimientos de petróleo, carbón, gas natural y enormes riquezas de minerales sólidos. Exterminaron nuestros bosques y arruinaron los suyos. ¿Qué quedó para nosotros? El subdesarrollo, la pobreza, la dependencia, el atraso, la deuda y la incertidumbre. Para las sociedades superdesarrolladas, el problema no es crecer, sino distribuir. Y no solo distribuir entre ellas, sino distribuir entre todos. El crecimiento sostenible de que se habla es imposible sin una distribución más justa entre todos los países. La humanidad es hoy una sola familia y todos tendremos el mismo destino. Ante la profunda crisis actual nos ofrece un futuro todavía peor en el que no se resolvería jamás la tragedia económica, social y ecológica de un mundo que será cada vez más ingobernable para salvar la humanidad un mundo mejor es posible Coloro che erano venuti qui per manifestare pacificamente il loro dissenso non abbiano potuto farlo pacificamente perché elementi dediti quasi professionalmente con la vocazione alla violenza, 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 violenza. Property damage is not violent. You can't violate a building or a window or something like that. It's, it's very different to us than, than a question of violence. That isn't violent unless... You're advocating attacking individuals, which we do not do. The elite class was sort of panicking, you know, after Seattle especially. So they, they sort of were looking for for the reason. And the, the only name you can point at was John Sazan. If you're looking for a mind behind the movement, it's definitely John Searson. He has written this one book, 
basically thinks that in order to save the world, we have to go back to Stone Age. And the way to 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 get there is to destroy um, the industries and everything. I find it kind of curious or strange that I've been called the uh, architect of the tactic of property damage or the black block kind of activity. That certainly isn't true. It seems that lives a very, very modest life. And for example, for, for a long time, his only income, he was making money by giving his own blood. We're trying to encourage the questioning, just the questioning. Why do people go out there and try to uh, protest or try to, you know, do something? That isn't mindless violence. I mean, the mindlessness is sitting there uh, doing dope, watching MTV, and then you go and get a job and you just schlep along. And that's, to me, that's violent. There's more and more signs everywhere that the life of consumerism is really not a satisfying life. achieve the objective of frightening our nation to the point where we don't, where people don't shop, where people don't shop. The will to consume terrorizes you. We're terrorized into being consumers. We have the freedom to choose between brand A and brand B and brand C. That's about it for freedom. We cannot let the terrorists achieve the objective of frightening our nation to the point where we don't, where we don't conduct business, where people don't shop. Yeah, I think there's, there's too much stuff to constantly work and constantly consume. It's madness. It's destroying everything, and it just has to go. I see very little that's worth preserving. I see no value or health in maintaining the system. And to get all these things, it is a matter of coercion, after all. People are forced to be in the mines and on the assembly lines. And without that, without these things, you don't have all this stuff. You don't have a world of, of things that we're supposed to strive after all of our lives. I don't think there's anyone who seriously embraces it, but the inertia carries it forward. It has to be stopped. It has to be destroyed. Deambulan por las calles y reciben el veneno constante de la publicidad comercial, sembrando sueños, ilusiones y ansias de consumos imposibles.
you know that, you know that uh, I think that young people today don't have any future. <laughs> I think everybody in the world now can feel, 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 feel. these large multinational corporations who are really starting to rule the world. These large multinational corporations spending $400 billion a year trying to sell us and trying to sell us uh, fast food and trying to sell us cars, then of course that has a huge, huge impact on us. The 30-second television spot is, I think, the most powerful piece of communication that human beings have ever come up with. <laughs> you are sitting there in your chair, passive, nothing to say, and outside there, there's some smart people who are producing fantastic television shows and commercials. Are the powerful producers of uh, information and producers of meaning. And you are the passive consumer of that meaning. And that meaning isn't even good meaning, it's mostly propaganda for a consumer culture. And then you think that happiness means to buy more and more, and at Christmas time especially, let's go out into the malls, let's go out into the malls, let's go out into the malls and really, really buy stuff, you know. The customer can choose body type and head type, first of all. Then they choose the color of the skin, um, the kind of makeup, including the lip color and the uh, how much eye, eye shadow and how much eyeliner. Um, they choose the eye color, the hair color, the hairstyle. So, you know, uh, fingernails, pretty much everything. They can pick exactly what they want. Well, the, the difference between our dolls and the most loved dolls you see um, are fairly obvious when you look at our dolls. You know, we're using uh, like uh, Hollywood special effects type uh, techniques to make these dolls. If we go in here, I can show you uh, five of them. This. This is head type number three. Um, it goes with uh, certain bodies, so different heads will match different bodies. Uh, this is head type number two. Uh, this is head type six. She doesn't have any hair at the moment, but uh, this is another head. Uh, head seven. This is head four and head eight. Yeah, we just came out with uh, the male doll. And here's one of the male bodies. He doesn't have his piece yet, but uh, if you look over there in the corner, there's one. He's supposed to be bald. This is a body type five. This is a petite body with a very large uh, breast size. Uh, this is one of the newer bodies that we have. This is uh, body type number two, which is also petite with a little more smaller on the breast, but you know, they're still a nice, nice size. This is body type four, which is petite with very small breast size. And this is another number two. This is number one, which is much taller than the other bodies we've been looking at. Uh, this one is uh, like a supermodel type body, very tall and thin um, for that type of taste. Uh, they're not cheap, you know, each is a lot of work and some very expensive material, so uh, you're looking at anywhere between 
uh, six to seven thousand dollars, really, depending on uh, bodies and if it's uh, female or male. See, the, the breasts are soft. They're filled with uh, softer silicone, so they, they feel much softer than the rest of the body. It's uh, one of the selling features that seems to interest people. which is a very significant down, figure, you have to say. And it really, really, really plays a big impact on the stock market. You have to say $10 on a barrel of oil wipes off 1% of global GDP, GDP, GDP impact on the stock market. You have to say $10 on a barrel of oil wipes off 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%. People are told that the modern technological future is empowering people, is bringing people closer together, is giving them a great access to variety, 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 variety. I remember as a child, we were told technology would free people and they wouldn't have to be working so much. Working so much. Well, I travel around and I overhear conversations all the time from people saying, I've got my beeper, I've got my cell phone, I've got my beeper, I've got my cell phone, I've got, I can't get away from work at all, even at commuting or at home. People are on this kind of electronic leash with all of these new devices. They're less and less uh, separate from work and technology. 1%. How we support Bluetooth, how we support uh, 3G. 1%. How we support Bluetooth, how we support uh, 3G. 1%. It will be possible to stay at home and do your job and just video conference with your fellow workers. 1%. The computer, I think, is going to be the very best tool for letting people socialize with each other. 1%. This is certainly a tool that can bring people together. 1%. More than 1%. Than isolate them. I think modern technology favors distancing over closeness, efficiency over playfulness, distancing over closeness, efficiency over playfulness. I'd like to see a gigantic project of dismantling, of, of just getting rid of all this stuff, of tearing up the, of tearing up the freeways and the roads and, and just getting rid of all this stuff that, that uh, rests on the destruction of nature, that separates us from the natural world, that has people on this treadmill to constantly work and constantly consume. It's madness. It's destroying everything and it just has to go.
average North American consumes five times more than a Mexican, 10 times more than a Chinese person, and 30 times more than a person from India.
you have a, a ration card with all the things you can get from the bodega. This is rice, these are beans, this is oil, cooking oil, of course, sugar, soap, washing soap, and there might be also toothpaste. You can have everything around. This is meat, this is bread. You can see we have a daily bread. Every single day, every single month, January, February, March. So this is what it is. You have this card, you go to the bodega, you put it on, and every month they give you the quota, I mean the amount you have to have during the, according to the ration system. I think it's a very easy, good system to make everyone have at least the basic needs covered. Nuestro máximo líder, comandante en jefe, Fidel Castro Ruz. Distinguidos invitados, queridos compatriotas. Rice, beans, rice and beans. Rice, beans, beans, rice, beans, rice, beans, rice and beans. Rice, beans, beans, rice, beans. For a Cuban traveling, it's like, it's really a big thing. Through an invitation letter rice, of a friend in rice, Europe. Rice, the first time I, I went to the supermarket, rice, I couldn't close my mouth. I was like, oh, rice, everything was really rice, big, rice, it was big shock, you know. Rice, and there is so much of everything apples, bread, perfume, rice, perfume, uh, nice shampoo, rice, trainers. Rice, it was the reality. And you tell you, I'm Rice and beans. Rice, beans. Beans. Rice, beans. We call it pasta de dientes, and it's called perla. Everybody knows this is perla. You don't need to put it on anymore. Cuba no promueve el consumismo. Cuba no realiza publicidad comercial alguna. Cuba, nuestro país, es por largo trecho el más democrático del planeta. Rice, beans, rice and beans. Rice, beans, beans, rice, beans. Hey, man, you know, you know, I never eat beans. <laughs> I didn't want to eat beans. I said, I don't want to eat beans. <laughs> I want to eat something else. But the first thing I did the next day was to go to McDonald's. <laughs> I wanted to see McDonald's. I wanted to see all your meal. McDonald's, Super Mac, Big, Big, Big Mac. I'm watching TV. I'm watching channel. I'm 
La economía mundial es hoy un gigantesco casino. Ja, julafton tycks komma ovanligt tidigt här på Wall Street i år. De allt mer osannolika kursrörelserna i internetaktier nådde ett nytt klimax under gårdagens handel. På Spre jobbar 50 unga människor från Nintendo-generationen som vet allt om internet och som jobbar bara för att det är kul. Svante Tidholm är en typisk representant för det nya informationssamhället. 19 år med redan flera år i branschen. Växlar mellan Stockholm och San Francisco. En miljon, två miljoner ungefär. Tre och en halv miljon. Fem miljoner. Cirka tio miljoner. 14 miljoner, 18 miljoner. I grund och botten så hatar jag pengar och nu så behöver jag inte bry mig om dem längre. För det är på något bizarrt så att Hälften av min tid går åt till att jobba med hur jag ska göra med pengarna. Jag har ingen motstånd längre. Jag har ju, jag har ju all tid jag, jag, jag vill ha och jag har alla, jag har alla pengar jag har. Jag har inga problem. Liksom. Jag kan sakna det billiga livet. Så fan alltså. Det ska vara så jobbigt att bli av med pengar. Jag kan köpa en flygbiljett dit. Jag kan... Det finns så många sådana billiga utvägar att köpa hela tiden. Du vet, det är väl liksom no problem. Come with me baby, come with me baby, come with me baby. Fast eftersom jag vet att det inte funkar så så vänds ju all den här energin in emot mig liksom. Vilket driver mig liksom ännu djupare in i mig själv och jag bara sitter och bara tom. Och vill hitta någon jävla mening. Jag vill bara fylla mig själv med någonting. För det är på något bizarrt sätt så att typ hälften av min tid går åt till att jobba med hur jag ska göra med pengarna. Min mamma sa det igår. Jag var ute och promenerade och sa ja, Jag önskar att du aldrig hade fått de där pengarna. Bara, Vad menar du egentligen? Ja, jag bara önskar att du inte hade fått de där pengarna. En miljon, två miljoner ungefär. Tre och en halv miljon, fem miljoner. Cirka tio miljoner. Fjorton miljoner. Arton miljoner. Överflöd, liksom, som, man, som man bara blir vanlig. Som en cirkus av pengar som svävar bort. Och, och så här i efterhand så framstår det bara som helt idiotiskt. Vem, vem mår bra av det här? Liksom? Ingen. Vi kan ju köpa en fin lägenhet. Och så kan jag sitta där och ta det lugnt. Och sen kommer jag träffa någon tjej som jag kan imponera på med en fin lägenhet. Och då kan jag säga till henne, älskling, vi gifter oss och så köper vi oss ett, köper vi ett hus. Och så skaffar vi barn och upp så är det kört. Och upp 
så är det kört. Är det kan du billiga livet. Så fan alltså. 18 miljoner. 14 miljoner. 10 miljoner. 5 miljoner. 3 och en miljon. 2 miljoner. 1 miljon. A comfortable existence, a career, all the promises of uh, material well-being are rather empty. And I think for quite a few people, they certainly understand that emptiness and the, the severe limits on fulfillment and freedom. Otherwise, they wouldn't do it. Otherwise, people would, well, I'm just going to get a good job. It's, I'll be happy. Uh, well, who's happy?
calling for a new ethic. Developed nations have a duty not only to share our wealth, but also to encourage sources that produce wealth. Yes! Why do people go out there and try to uh, protest or try to, you know, do something? That isn't mindless violence. I mean, the mindlessness is sitting there uh, doing dope watching MTV, and then you go and get a job and you just schlep along. I mean, that's, to me, that's violent. <laughs> Targeted property damage or property destruction is necessary. It's it's just it does break out of the confines of the politics of politics as usual. What do you achieve by holding a sign? Doing the protest as usual stuff, I've seen decades of it, it doesn't do anything. People pay no attention. Why should they pay any attention? It's not worthy of attention. But when people fight, that is something. It does grab the attention, and it should, because it's real stuff. It isn't just the symbolic game of, oh, it makes me feel good, I have my sign and stuff. Well, I don't care about that. If it was, if it was valid, if it was not ineffective, much better. I would much rather have a nice, polite, peaceful, nobody is put in danger, nobody gets hurt, no one gets arrested, nobody gets hit on the head by a cop, and not even a window is broken. Ideal. Except it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. Property damage, property Property damage, property damage, property destruction, property destruction, property damage, property damage, property destruction, property destruction, property damage, property damage, property destruction, 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 I'm calling for a new ethic. Corporate property is the most obvious legitimate target in my view. Banks, expensive stores, uh, chains like Starbucks and so forth. People understand that as part of the global system, part of this, uh, part of this encroaching, standardized, destructive, a form that is wiping out uh, all differences, uh, all freedom. Property damage, property damage, property destruction, property destruction, property damage, property damage, property destruction, property destruction, property damage, property damage, property destruction, property destruction, property damage. People for two million years didn't destroy the natural world. They didn't have war. They had leisure time, I mean, so forth and so on. That's what primitivism refers to in, in one way. And to me, that's very inspiring.
in this new world, the people will get uh, back their own culture again. In this new world, we will have a new set of values. There will be a big paradigm shift, a big global mind shift, where people will suddenly say, I don't want a fancy car. Where people will suddenly say, I, I don't want another Big Mac. Where people will suddenly say, uh, I don't want to wear uh, any diesel jeans. Where people will suddenly say, uh, I want to have a simple, fulfilling life. Where people will suddenly say, uh, I want to have a simple, fulfilling life. I want something else. A simple, fulfilling life. Yeah!